you, yes you, are listening to Comic Reflections, number 235. I'm your host, Nicholas Prom, And I'm Spencer Valadez. Perfectly normal Spencer Valadez. No uh, no jokey intro like uh, a certain other co- co-host that we have? <laughs> nope. Okay. Is this going to be a running theme throughout? Sure. Okay. Comic Reflections is brought to you by The Outhousers. You can find our show and other nifty content at theouthousers.com. And if you enjoy this program... You could listen to us on iTunes and Stitcher. Or Stitcher. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you do both, go for it. It's a little I, weird. It's, I don't know why you would use both formats. You, you know. could also rate and review us on... Either, both of those, either yeah. of those, yes. And that would be great. It would help us out a lot. Yeah. Leave your nasty comments for us to read. Yeah, they can do that on Twitter, Facebook, yeah. everywhere. We're fine with body shaming... Just regular shaming? Really? I remember... It, I don't know if it was on the show or a time, just a time I came over here, you gave me crap for body shaming you. Oh. For being so slender. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, at any rate, hey, today is kind of a big day. Yeah. We're wrapping up uh, Showcase Presents Green Lantern Volume 3. Mm-hmm. Um, we started Volume 1 a year ago. Yeah. Like, almost exactly a year ago. And if we hadn't taken the summer break, we'd be in Volume 5 now. Because yeah. Volume 4 is actually pretty short. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, the first issue we're going to talk about is Green Lantern number 57. Cover dated December of 1967. Cover art penciled by Gil Kane and inked by Sid Green. What do you tell me, talk about this cover for a sec, Spencer. Anything? All right, let's talk about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's the, like a giant hand pointing at Green Lantern. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's fun. Uh, Major it, disaster is back. I've been trying to draw hands better. Oh yeah, and it is. It's fairly difficult for me. Yeah, I, I'm. I am no artist myself. I mean, basically, we're art critics, so <laughs> <laughs> you know, among other things. But um, I've got gum under my fingernail. That's right. awesome. Yeah. But anyway, um, the story in this issue is called "The Catastrophic Weapons of Major Disaster." It was written by Gardner Fox, penciled and inked by Gil Kane. How long before we start seeing a different creative team? It's book? not long, actually. No. Uh, in volume, I'm not complaining. No, no, way. but in volume four uh, of Green Lantern, we will see much more variance creative from uh, creative teams. I don't know if it's to the uh, uh, detriment or to the advancement of the series. I think, from a historical standpoint, a detriment. Because the series, like like when Neil Adams and Denny O'Neill took over it, uh-huh. it was like near cancellation. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's I'm, a thing. I'm just and a it little... still got canceled. Right. You know, yeah. so I'm a... that's something to remember. I'm just, I'm waiting for a little variety here. Yeah, um, and, and yeah. you'll get it. You're, you'll get it in, in, in short order. Yeah. Uh, so this issue starts off with a guy in a lake or a river or whatever in a canoe. And he's about to be some just, body of water. Yeah, he's about <laughs> to be just nailed by like a meteorite. Um, oh, meteorite! But then at the like the last second, the meteorite like makes like a ninety degree turn and lands somewhere else. And he's just so so thankful that he got an evergreen insurance policy, <laughs> right? From uh, Hal Jordan. <laughs> and so like news spreads and people start going nuts for this insurance policy. It turns out he was sent out to this, like, like uh, new area, and the, the boss is like, look, I can't get any customers there, why don't you go and you try to work your magic? So he does, um, and then there's more instances of people being nearly killed, and uh, the thing that's going to cause them to be killed is, is diverted know, somehow. Because they have the insurance policy. Right. Interesting thing uh, I just thought of. What if, I mean, of course he wouldn't do it, but what if Hal was such a whiz-bang salesman because he was using the the, land, the right. ring to compel people to buy insurance? Yeah, I, well, I was thinking that he was causing these uh, these incidents, like, un, like unknowingly. Like, you know how he, he's done that kind of stuff in the past where, like, yeah. he has, like, a, a Like he dreamed stuff. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah like, like, that's how he turned High Face into a bird. Right, yeah. Remember that? That was yeah. weird. But, um, gosh, it, I think that story will, like, live in infamy. Yeah. Just weirdness. Um, but it, it turns out it's not him. Uh, and this, these crooks, like, they try to take advantage of it. Uh, and they realize as long as they have an insurance policy, 
nothing bad can happen to them. And so they so decide, the crooks decide they're going to get take out major policies from Evergreen uh -huh. and then commit crimes and yeah. not be stopped. And then Green Lantern can't stop them. Yeah. Uh, but the first time it happens, it goes totally awry and they're caught anyways. Uh, because they didn't say, like, what they wanted perfectly. It's like the wish with the genie kind of thing. Well, yeah, but it's not like insurance policies. Can you really get it down to the real nitty gritty like right, that? I no. would think that there's it's more general, broader language. Yeah. Specificity, generally speaking, would be more detrimental to you. Yeah. That, see, I think that would lead... That that's that's where insurance gaps take place. Yeah, I think. So uh, the one of the crooks decides he's going to do it better. He's going to be more specific and all this, and it kind of works. Uh, Green Lantern isn't able to punch him. Uh, when he, <laughs> he got anti Green Lantern punch insurance, yeah. right? No, um, what did he get though? He did get a, a chair to the chest from Green Lantern. Oh, I meant like the policy, but you know. Oh, sorry. Yeah, but he, yeah, he did get a chair <laughs> to the chest by Green Lantern. Okay. And then uh, Hal Jordan, or Green Lantern just, I think it's the same guy, just beats <laughs> him with, like, a leg of a chair. But as that's happening, the building they're in starts to crumble. And Weird. it collapses on them. And so, I mean, Green Lantern being Green Lantern, he has, he's, like, protected by his ring. So he's mm -hmm. not killed, but he's still knocked unconscious a little bit. The crooks get away. And he's climbing out, and he's just totally disoriented. He doesn't really... He keeps saying, like, disaster, and it's in, like, bolded letters, and, you know. And so it's, like, hinting. And then we get this, like, monologue from <laughs> Major Disaster. Well, we also get how, like, he, he coming to the realization, like, if I didn't know any better, I'd swear my old enemy right, Major yeah. Disaster was behind this. Yeah. What a coincidence. Because it is. Yeah. And then we get kind of the uh, recap of... What happened to Major Disaster? Yeah, because uh, it seemed like he died before, right? Yeah, it was a, a crossover event between um, Hal uh, Green Lantern and The Flash. Yeah! Yeah, uh, and both of them just, like, he went Was to, that like, the one where they switched powers? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, but he went to grab his, like, machine that would cause disaster, and he didn't have his special glove on, and it, like, we thought it killed him, but it didn't. It just kind of... I, I don't really... One I don't really remember because it's been a little while since I I'm this. looking at it. that but was back also, in that was back in uh, Green Lantern number forty three. Well, no, he describes it again. Oh, okay. Yeah, how it, how he like was it like he averted death. I can't remember, and it was a long since been a while since I read this, and it was super convoluted. Like <laughs> in typical DC comics <laughs> yeah, fashion. Uh, I mean, really. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I mean, these take so much more energy to read. <laughs> and try to dice, decipher, I, I feel, than, than any Marvel comic. That's funny, because I feel the opposite. I feel like this is more fun. Well, no, I'm not denying the fun. Uh, I w like, for me, it's more fun to read these, these than it is. You uh, have a greater Marvel. level of immersion in DC than you do with Marvel. Yeah, definitely. And I think I'm pretty well immersed in both, but I grew up reading Marvel comics, mm -hmm. so I'm just like, I'm there. Yeah. So. So, after he's like... Figured out how he not how he's not died. Uh, yeah. Major Disaster decides he's gonna get some henchmen. He's gonna get like kind of his own power ring kind of thing. Yeah. That it protects him from his own disaster. Well, that's um, pretty good. Yeah. But he's able to u he uses it kind of like Green Lantern does, uh, where he can like power something with his ring and make it disaster proof. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think so. And so, like, he would he was using it on people, and any time anything bad was going to happen to him, he was safe. Wasn't the guy about to get hit with a comet? Yeah, yeah that seems a really out there thing to happen to anybody. Right. So maybe he's causing these disasters. I think he's causing the disasters as well, because right, if you okay. remember, he knows the identity of Hal Jordan. Okay. So what is major the what is the right right right. What does Major Disaster hope to get out of this? Because the insurance thing has nothing to do with him, really. No, he's trying to get closer to Hal Jordan so he can take out Green Lantern. And so he's doing that by like causing all this stuff to happen. And then he's gonna he goes in, in the last panel on page... Uh, oh. It's not like he's... But see, if he was using that to track him down, that would make sense. But yeah. since he knows how, who Hal Jordan is, if he's aware that he's an insurance agent, clearly... Right. 
Uh, oh, excuse me. His ring doesn't call, cause him anti-disaster. It's his whole suit. Okay, but do you see yeah. where I'm going with yeah. this? If he already knows how Jordan is Green Lantern, and he knows how an insurance agent, couldn't he just go to the insurance office and try to kill him? Well, he does. Okay. Yeah, but he... all this other stuff seems very roundabout. <laughs> yeah. It's an overly elaborate plan. Like, needlessly so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, he walks into the insurance office. Oh, but Flash and I saw you destroyed. Uh, to all intents and purposes. Uh, but now I'm back to taunt you. Uh, you're going to get the death penalty. What? Um, he, like, crushes a safe. And while he's doing that, like, in between panels, Hal Jordan goes from Hal Jordan to Green Lantern. Mm. And, like, I don't know how it happens. It's just, like, immediate. Um, well, can't he just use the ring to suit up? Yeah, probably. I mean, I um, just figured. Right, but I... Okay, fine. I don't have anything good. Uh, but he, like... <laughs> How, or Green Lantern can't use his power ring against him. It's useless. Oh, because um, it's protecting him against stuff. And so he just, like, reaches down into the safe and grabs all the money. And they start to try to fight, and Hal is just... Green Lantern up. and Major yeah, Disaster. Yeah, Green okay. Lantern is getting tore up by Major Disaster. Um, he does this, like, whirlwind kind of thing. And it, like, sends Green Lantern, like, into the wall. And th there's no, like, beating him. And oh, so, does he? Is it where he says he creates a, like a mini tornado, like in that commercial? Yeah. And I found the commercial, the oh, Ajax it? White Tornado commercial. It was a series of commercials. Okay. In the sixties and seventies, I found it. I'm like, oh, okay. This is a, a strange reference. That huh. that. I mean, it really dates it. Yeah. You know. I mean, and like a television commercial. It's one thing to reference a movie uh -huh. or something. But a commercial, a lot of that stuff gets lost to obscurity. Yeah, but I guess if, I guess if it's a really popular one, yeah, I mean, you can still remember some of the like old ad campaigns from. Oh sure. You know, New Coke, uh, which is a terrible example, and I don't know why. Right, but whatever, <laughs> just things like that. Yeah. I, I was just reading an article the other day about the uh, Mac Tonight, the McDonald's, like that oh, hat, right. that Crescent Moon guy <laughs> playing the piano. Yeah. I, like, I remember that, and yeah, yeah. there was or just an article the about California that. California Raisins. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, and, and also realizing they're making the reference, just, it's just a throwaway reference and to the mentality at DC is still, uh, at the time, is still that, oh, fans cycle out every four years. Right. So who, even though this is like 1967, yeah, mm -hmm. one would think that the collector mentality has set in and that... that, that you think so? Yeah, yeah. at least... Like, you would think that the DC people would be aware that, like, fandom, of, fandom is a thing at this point. Yeah. And, like, the cycling out after four years, that uh, idea is a, an erroneous one. Yeah. But, you know, DC was always behind the times. Mm. They're still behind the times. Oh, Those man. Uh, I think as long as we get one good DC dig in each episode, I think we're good. Keeps our like, fans happy. Look, I love yeah. DC Comics. <laughs> yeah. Man, can you get your act together, please? <laughs> you know, like... Yeah. So, not you, I mean... The... Right, yeah. So, uh, Major Disaster just takes off uh, because Green Lantern is defeated. Uh, but he's like, I'll come back for you later. This is just a taunt. Um, <laughs> and, like, in the out of nowhere, he's, like, cleaning up his office and his, like, secretary runs in. What happened to the office? And, uh... Like, the phone's ringing, and um, he answers it, and it's major disaster again. Basically taunting him, saying, this is where I'm going to be. You're not going to be able to stop me, but come anyways. And then the phone explodes. Yeah. And she's like, nope, peace out. I'm gone. This is this not a direct secretary. quote. <laughs> no, no. This is a paraphrase. But, yeah, the secretary bails. Yeah. Later, I was thinking, like, what's he going to do about the office? And I was like, oh, wait, you can fix everything with Green Lantern. Yeah. Green. Okay. It does everything. Yeah. And so, unfortunately, he goes and he grabs his power battery. Yeah. And he's, like, trying to do the oath and, like, pushing his ring against the lantern. And it's not working. Because it was bathed in anti-disaster energy, which prevents him from charging the ring. Yeah. Which, okay. And so, Green Lantern decides, well, I gotta go anyways. So, bear in mind, the lantern, or the power battery is invisible. Yeah. That's important. So, Hal just goes to confront... Yeah. Uh, major disaster, because he said he was gonna. Mm -hmm. and, and he, he thinks he's gonna try to, and bluff his way through it. He, like, he goes to throw a punch, and he's just totally missed. But then he comes around with the other hand, and just nails major disaster, and he's on the ground. Turns out he used 
he hit him over the head with the power battery. battery. If you turn back to the previous page, page 20, uh, the second to last panel, you can see it looks like Hal is holding something in his hand. Very clever. Um, But, you know, you'd have to be eagle-eyed on the first read-through to spot that. But He, uh, um, He rationalized that if he can't hit Major Disaster with anything, maybe the Something charged with that anti or coated with that anti disaster energy would, co- counteract, would counteract it, and it was a solid yeah uh, notion. Uh, and so, with him knocked out, the energy is like kind of released from everything, and he's able to recharge his ring. And he decides instead of just sending him to jail and wiping his memory of the Flash and Green Lantern, he second, places a mental block so anytime he was going to try to expose his identity, it would just be gibberish. Yeah, which so is can't, pretty hilarious. Yeah. Also kind of terrible. Look at the comb over uh, Major Disaster has. We finally see him un- without his mask. <laughs> yeah. He seriously has a receding hairline. Uh, he's congratulated by uh, how Jordan's congratulated by the uh, insurance company owner. And, yeah. yeah. Do we get his name? I've never, I don't think we've ever gotten his I'm name. I'm not sure. Mr. Boss Man. It doesn't yeah. really matter. Maybe it's Mr. Evergreen. It's Evergreen Insurance. Who knows? Yeah. It could be a regional manager. It do- really doesn't matter. It doesn't this matter. guy's this guy's not gonna be a confidant of Hal's. Right. He's not gonna you know have any great you know yeah. stuff. He's just his employer. So anyway, on to Green Lantern number fifty eight, cover dated January of nineteen sixty eight. Cover art penciled by Gil Kane and inked by Sid Green. Now this cover, meh. It's mostly it's a. Uh, I like the cover better than I like the story. Okay, well, let's talk about this. It's like a large figure of Green Lantern and a smaller figure of Green Lantern, and the large figure is all done in negative. Yeah, I dig it. Okay. I mean, I like the effect. I just, I'm kind of meh on it. Huh. But uh, but you're meh on the story. Oh, even the uh, Comics Code Authority uh, stamp is in negative, as is the DC Comics uh, bullet. Oh, I don't think I noticed that. Yeah. It Isn't is. that fun? Yeah. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. I like it. Okay. But the story in this issue is called Peril of the Powerless Green Lantern, Mm -hmm. written by Gardner Fox, penciled by Gil Kane, and inked by Sid Green. Yeah. Cool splash panel. Lots of floating heads with many facial expressions from Uh Green Lantern. And And the main figure of Green Lantern is just looks tormented or something. Yeah. So I I wasn't a huge fan of this issue. Okay. So it basically starts Green Lantern's doing his thing. Uh, he's helping people. He's you know flying through fires to rescue damsels in distress. He uses a big net to grab some chicks like out of the fire. Right. Um, oh, before we go on, there's a couple oh, yeah. things I at the top of the show I forgot to mention. Oh yeah. Well, I have something to say that will segue into something. Okay. So about Sid Green as an inker. Okay. I think. He's good, but he's not great for Gil Kane. And I'll get into that for a sec. For example, when Sid Green took over and started inking uh, Mike Sikowski's pencils on Justice League of America, uh-huh. which Jeff and I haven't gotten there yet, but it'll happen, it really adds something much, some much needed dimension, makes a little okay. more the art a little better, because uh, Sikowski's, you know, not that happening. Mm-hmm. But Gil Kane is really happening as a pencil, and I penciler, and I feel like. The Green's inks aren't a good fit. They kind of overtake it and kind of they kind of round off and kind of soften a lot of his stuff. Mm. To it actually ends up looking like a, a bit like something, say Murphy Anderson mm. would draw. It kind of ends up looking like his penciling style. Here's what here's where I segue. Last time we recorded, you and I talked about the recent passing of Murphy Anderson, uh-huh. and you had told me something before the show that I repeated. Uh, that was not factual. We had said that um, oh, right, he did uh, new covers for the uh, right, Crisis on Multiple Earths trades. Covers. No, not at all. All those covers are by Alex Ross or right. uh, either by Alex Ross or um, Jerry Ordway. And I was going to ask you, put you on the spot, where you got that information or that misinformation? It, it, it wasn't covers. It was... There, he has material in them. That's what I meant. That's reprinted yeah, in yeah. those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was saying. Uh that was the most recent stuff that he had done, or like he had. It was in print. In print, but yeah. it was reprints of stuff from the Silver Age. Right. Yeah. So okay. He's still making bank on it though. From beyond yeah. the grave. No. Well, no. When those came out, he was still making money. Um. No, because they no. were produced. Bef- those that material was produced originally 
before the royalties system right, was in place. Yeah. So he probably didn't see any money from those. Those dips. Well, that may or may not be the case, but likely no. Right. Also, it occurred to me, I, our last episode was talking about that Avengers crossover in uh, Supergirl mm-hmm. Team Up. Uh, I was listening and it occurred to me, you don't know what the Scarlet Witch calls her powers, do you? No. It's the hex power. Oh, I mean, I mean that makes sense. Yeah, but because you refer to it as using her witchy ways, and oh, yeah. I'm just kind of like I let it roll when we we were on when we were recording, and the, I yeah. thought it was kind of weird, but you know whatever. And went back, and I'm like, oh, wait, he doesn't know. Yeah, no. So okay. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, the hex power. She's a witch. Yeah, not exactly though. The supernatural, the actual witchcraft thing came in later, uh-huh. but that's a whole other ball of wax or yarn. Yeah. Hey, let's talk about Green Lantern. Okay. Now that I've shamed you. Yeah. And made that correction that I almost <laughs> forgot about. So. Uh, yeah. And turn, like, every time he kind of, like, this is just, like, straight action sequences for Green Lantern. Which, okay, great. Um, yeah, he's fighting people, he's saving people. But he's kind of, like, manic through, like, half the, like, half the time. Yeah, he's After crazy. He's, like, done. He, like, goes and robs a store. Yeah. Yeah, it just, like, he's, like, happy, sad, like, any kind of, like, emotion that he might have is, like, an enormous emotion. It's not like a, oh, I'm happy today. Yeah, whatever. It's, well, I'm so fucking happy. Right, right, right. But, yeah. And so the uh, Guardians are like, yeah, hey, here's the thing, Green Lantern. You need a break. Uh, you have combat fatigue syndrome uh, from all of your... Your adventures. Your adventures for us. It's time to take a break. We know you're taking a break as Hal Jordan. You need to take a break as Green Lantern, or you're gonna lose it and you're gonna die. Yeah. Uh, and so they take his ring from him, and well, he didn't know that they had taken his ring. It's I'm kind of sticking around. He gets time. mad at the the Guardians. He says, "I'm entitled to a vacation as Hal Jordan, but Green Lantern neither needs nor desires a vacation." Right. And they tell him, "No, too bad." Yeah. Basically. Uh, and so on his vacation, he's kind of hanging out by a river, and. The the weird okay this was a really weird panel. <laughs> yeah, I know his the one you're talking. Crazy eye, like he was kind of like resting his eyes, and he hears a scream, but like his like his he right opens eye, one eye. Yeah, pops open, and he looks insane. He really does. <laughs> he looks like the old man in the Telltale Heart, you know, with the big cataract <laughs> yeah. eye. That's what it looks like. Yeah, it's crazy. It turns out... There's a girl, uh, a, a beautiful girl, of course, uh-huh. and her stupid kid brother getting chased by a bear. Yeah. And so, without a ring, he jumps in and he fights this bear. First, he's fighting a bear. No yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> no he's way in the world. man without any powers. No way. And, like, not even protect, really protective clothing. He right. punches a bear in the solar plexus, and then in the face, yeah. no, dead. And then, like, he does this weird swing thing from a tree and kicks it, and then grabs a giant bee's nest and throws, and throws it, it at the and bear. And breaks it on the bear's head. And he, he doesn't get stung once. The bees chase after the bear. Like, it is nonsense. It is so <laughs> dumb. It's super dumb. Uh, I hate I hated it. <laughs> There's no way a human that he's not going to be able to beat a bear. He's not. I don't care who you are. No, you're totally right. Oh. Uh, but the pretty girl and the boy invite him back to their house. They have a swimming pool. You can lounge around the the uh, the pool. You can you know, do all that stuff. And, of course, Hal starts romancing the sister because... Because reasons. He's a, he, he's a wolf. Yeah. Um, so back on Oa, yeah, the, the guardians keep, are talking to each other. Yeah, the keeper of the the rings, the the guardian that is known as the keeper of the rings, is like inspecting Hal's ring and making sure he's like doing routine maintenance on the ring. Yeah, and uh, found a flaw in it. Yeah, and not the necessary impurity. This is just like a yeah. Just he a, called it a chemical radiation flaw, like he got hit by some radiation. Right. So it was making Hal act weird. But it wasn't because of combat fatigue. It right. was just a thing in the ring. Yeah. So they're going to fix it and give it back to him. Yeah. Okay, so cut back to Hal. Uh, Hal's, like, super stoked, like, chilling with this chick. He likes the family. They're hanging out. And in the middle of the night, he's awakened by uh, the sound of something, like, breaking or, like, people moving around. So he jumps in and, like, he changes into his... Well, no, he looks down and he sees one of the guards of the estate knocked out. Yeah. 
And so he runs back to his room, puts on his Green Lantern uniform. And jumps off the balcony. And just gets a guy. Which is um, awesome. Jumps off. Think about that. Jumping off a balcony, swinging, and connecting with a punch as you're landing. Yeah. I'm going to say a rolled ankle. Yeah. I'm also that saying means... that's almost as improbable as the fight with the bear. Yes. Uh, and so he, like, takes on a couple guys, but then three of them jump in. What and, were these like, guys even he... here for? It, I don't think... It never really said. Were they robbers? Uh, yeah. Unmasked, by the way. Yeah. Because that's smart. Three of them, like, take him on, and it says, With a muscle-cranking heave, the magnificent green gladiator slams back the swimming thugs. No way. But then he... So, I'm giving it all the crap, but this next page does kind of even it out. <laughs> okay. He says, uh, Maybe I'll make like Batman, and I'll stand a chance. I've seen him use this head bruiser to take uh, a man off his pins. What's Batman got that I haven't, except Robin? Crash. Uh, oh, yeah, and Batgirl. So, just a dude in a costume can take people on. Uh, yeah, and these guys aren't super villains. They're just guys. Right. And we have seen in many issues how punching guys, so he's right. good at it. But my, my, my problem is he's doing all this. And whether he admits it or not, he is totally aware that he is basically bulletproof, hurtproof, deathproof because of the ring. But the, he doesn't have the ring right now. Right. And so I don't know, like, I don't know how much of this stuff he's giving. Like, he's not thinking through this process. Yeah. Granted, and he was kind of, what, kind of roused, rudely awakened from sleep, right? By a noise yeah. or something, and yeah. then he jumped into action. So one of the robbers... Throws a statue yeah. at him. It looks like an uh, an Academy Award. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, and knocks him or it knocks him over at least, and so they realize, oh, he's not. He's not as super as he. Yeah, so they pull out their guns and fire on him. At that instant, uh -huh. the ring rematerializes on his hand and and the and you know stops the bullets. Yeah, and then he sprays they, they and turn into puffs of dust. And then he like nails them against the wall with a giant hand. Yeah. Uh, the people wake, the family wakes up, the daughter sweeps up to the room and's like, oh no, what about Hal? Uh, and, and it's like, <laughs> and of course Hal's like, oh crap, what am I going to do now? Yeah. But she opens the door and there's Hal Jordan. The Guardians. Gives her a hug. Yeah. Yeah, put in place an emergency duplicate. Yeah. <laughs> an emergency plot hole filling device. Yeah. And that's how uh, he drives off. And he'll be, I'll be back soon. Maybe. Yeah. And, you know, so... Stuff. Yeah, it's a dumb issue. Yeah. Our last issue of this book was kind of fun. No, I really like this. This is definitely the humdinger of the uh, the episode. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, let's see, that is uh, Green Lantern number 59, cover dated March of 1968. Cover art, penciled by Gil Kane and inked by Murphy Anderson. And uh, uh, this is a great cover. It is probably their biggest bait and switch cover. So I don't far. know. That's There's quite a few of those. There are, but... Yeah, with Green Lantern down and... Another guy who is a, guy. apparently a Green Lantern yeah. uh, standing over him. Mm -hmm. You know, he says, get off the earth, this earth, Hal Jordan. There's mm -hmm. only there's room for only one Green Lantern. Me. Yeah. What's going on? Mm -hmm. This issue is the first appearance of Guy Gardner, mm -hmm. who is maybe a controversial figure in, in Green Lantern history, but yeah. I, I think he's one of the most fun characters. This I is, will give you that. I think he is very fun, and he is the snarky, sarcastic Green Lantern. That's I mean, his, I mean, have, that's you his re role. have you read any of the 1980s uh, Green Lantern stuff, where he's just like the major jerk? I've read more of the Justice League International stuff. Oh, okay, well, that's yeah. yeah, that's pretty great stuff, too. I mean, he's in there. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've read, of course, the, the One Punch with Batman. I don't know. You would know, okay. so the answer is no. Probably not. Anyways. He challenges Batman to a fight. Oh, okay. And Batman knocks him out with one punch. <laughs> and Blue Beetle is he right there. <laughs> no, he just just one good punch. You know, Hal Jordan or Guy Gardner was just just running his mouth and so like, come on. Was he just not using the ring then? Nope, nope. He even took it off. Oh, okay. That makes way more sense then. And uh, yeah, if, if, I think if memory serves me correctly, and yeah, Blue Beetle and. Uh, I think Blue Beetle and Mr. Miracle are right there, like, really enjoying that moment. Mm. Because Guy Garner's a super jerk in that series. Right. 
I, I have to say, one of the strengths of the New 52 is, man, Guy Gardner's arc has really been incredible. Yeah. He, he's, I mean... It, At one point, didn't he join the Red Lantern? I can't remember if he, he... I know he did, but I don't know if he came back or not, but... Yeah. But He'd uh, make an excellent Red Lantern. Yeah, he did. And and it it's fitting. Yeah. You know? But no, they, they've done a lot with him. Hmm. So, anyway, let's talk about this. Earth's Other Green Lantern is this story, written by John Broom, penciled by Gil Kane, and inked by Sid Green. And I think I'm glad John Broom wrote this. Yeah. I like Gardner Fox. A lot of his stuff is formulaic, and a lot of the ones were like, no, end up being Gardner Fox ones. Uh-huh. Um, but John Broom, I think, is the a higher quality writer. I'm sorry. I'm just, like, thinking of the criticism I might get from uh, our friend Stephen Grant about my interpretation of the last issue. Oh, I'm... <laughs> you know, he's pretty brutally honest about when a story is crap, too. So. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I mean, and whatever, it's your opinion. He's not going to be like, you son of a bitch, I'll never <laughs> listen to the show again. I don't think he would do that. <laughs> no, no, that's not what I'm thinking at all. Uh, Stephen is great. He's one of the biggest supporters of this show, and, and uh, he's terrific. So Yeah. Anyway. So we we find out that the uh, Guardians have a like a super telescope. Uh, of course can, they do. It can see images kind of from the past. Uh, it can see images uh, happening at this moment. And, and images of what might have been. Yeah. Which is pretty awesome. And so Hal's like, all right, I want to play with this. <laughs> and he kind of like, oh, they, he finds out that uh, it can store the information from some, uh, a dead person's brain. Or a dead Creepy. creature's brain. Yeah. And so he's like, okay, fine. I want to know the circumstances of me getting my ring. I know it from my perspective. What about Abin Sir? And so we get this long kind of recap of Abin Sir's demise and his, like, search for New Lantern. Yeah. Um, and it turns out that when he sent the power uh, out to find someone worthy, it didn't just find Green uh, Hal Jordan. It found a second guy... This guy Gardner, in like he was the east. The only reason that he didn't get the ring is because Hal was closer. Yeah, proximity is how how Jordan became the first Green Lantern. Yeah, even uh, though think about it, like like in later Green Lantern stories, you know, the ring will travel across space to find yeah. somebody. Like, I mean, if they're both so worthy, my... if they're both worthy, I guess it would make sense that the closest one. But relatively speaking, it shouldn't matter that much. Yeah, I guess that would have to be the only factor. Oh, this guy is closer. Yeah, so. Because maybe for some reason, since he's not a Green Lantern at this point, he's not protected by the Green Lantern. Nope, that doesn't make sense either, because he rescues people all the time. I think we're just going to have to uh, let this go yeah. and carry on. Yeah. Uh, and so, Hal gets the ring, he puts it on, he does his, you know, he lifts the cliff, he, you know... He oh, from, he puts on the ring and, 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 and stuff. Yeah. Abin Sir gives it to him. Yeah. And so, he's like, oh... Cool, I'm glad I saw that. Hey, by the way, there was a second guy? What would have happened if he became Green Lantern? And so they're like, hold on just a second, and we'll cue that up. <laughs> we got uh, it right here. Yeah. And so, uh, Guy Gardner gets the ring in a similar way. Now, and... Guy is a gym teacher. Yeah. Which, okay. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I think it's a good idea for, like, a basis for a superhero. Like, you can do athletic things. It's probably a bit of a requirement for a superhero. Well, yes. Unless you're Superman. Well, look, he can... Um, Superman does athletic things. He doesn't have to, though. Well, look, it's not... He didn't have to train to do it. Because he got all the power from the yellow sun of the Earth. Yeah. Okay, but Superman... But he still uses physical force to do his stuff. Yeah, he punches things. Yeah. What are you... Where... Do you see that there's a, a gap in your logic here? No. <sighs> You're killing me, man. <laughs> he doesn't need to do physical things. Well, it's not like he has mental powers. He can just boop, 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 solve every problem. It's... Of course he has to do physical things. He doesn't have to build himself up physically. Right. Like, because... Good heroes. What? You're nuts. No. Even as he... a kid, I was never a huge fan of Superman. Which is why you're a terrible person. <laughs> but, look. Hal Jordan doesn't have to train to become a, a Green Lantern. He had, he was a a pilot. You have to be physically fit. That wasn't it. The only the only requirement was being fearless and good hearted. Right. I'm saying as a prior to becoming a superhero. Yeah. Being physically fit is kind of a prerequisite. Yeah. Unless you have powers that give you physical ability. Yeah. Unless you're Superman. 
There are other people. Super... Oh, so what about somebody has an accident that gives them powers, like written by a radioactive spider or cosmic rays? You didn't have to do anything to get those powers except be in the wrong place at the right time. Yeah. So you're saying they're somehow less heroic with what they do with that ability because they weren't, like, athletic and stuff before. That is the <laughs> weakest argument for anything ever. And I'm seeing your... I just saw your crazy tooth. Oh, my crazy tooth? Yeah, you know my what that crazy is. crazy non-tooth? Yeah, yeah, you know, when you see that one over on the side, if you're missing that tooth, it's mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. yeah, okay. That's ad hominem, though. What do you mean? When you're in an argument, and then you attack the person instead of the argument? No, 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 I just... That was just a non sequitur. I just pointed out a thing oh, okay. that didn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> that wasn't about my argument at all. Oh, okay. So, um, let's move on, okay? Yeah. So, Abinster gives the ring to Guy Gardner, and he just kind of sets off, and, like, the, the ring's not working super well for him because he, he doesn't understand it at all because it took him longer to get to Evan Sir, and so Evan Sir died faster. Yeah, um, and so he had to kind of learn some things on the fly. Right. But uh, remember how the ring is pre-programmed and you kind of, like, Hal was taught things by the ring, but without knowing that he it was, yeah, yeah so. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Guy does have to kind of learn a bit. We get a great splash panel with a, 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 a montage of, uh, villains. of villains, of villains that Hal fought. The yeah. Shark, Sonar, Black Hand, Dr. Polaris, and, of course, Sinestro. I will say that the shark looks oh, kind of weird. Yeah, uh, it's kind of drawn really differently. Egg like, uh, egg-headed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fun. And then he, like, Guy Gardner... Goes, is out in space. Yeah, he goes to this, like, planet, and these, like, orange and blue robots are, like, fighting each other. Yeah. And it turns out that it's a planet, like, ruled by children... Like, they, never, they weren't able to grow up past a certain age. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like Neverland. Uh, yeah. It's like adults there, too. Yeah. Some, um, it sort of reminds me of that Star Trek episode, Miri, where all the kids, were like, once you hit puberty, you start to get that disease that kills you. Yeah, 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 okay. Which, okay, this is not like that, but a planet yeah. where children are the only people mm -hmm. left that... Yeah. And so, uh, Green Lantern kind of, like, uses his power ring to, well, Guy Gardner, uses his power ring to, like, get the robots to talk to him. And they give him the information about the kids, and he's like, oh, I'll go talk to the kids. This is, endless war is dumb. Uh, <laughs> and so yes, as he's flying is. over, the kids <laughs> use this, like, mental power that they have of, like, mind control. And they, like, bring Green, uh, Guy Gardner down and sit him down, and they, they think he's, like, a super android. Um, right. It's they, probably been a long time since they've seen an adult. Yeah. Uh, and so they send him off to fight the, uh, the orange? What's the guy? Yeah. Uh, you, he has to go fight the orange army. Yeah. Um, and then he's, like, flying, like, he destroys all the, this, like, orange army, all these orange army robots, and then he gets closer to their base. Cool robots, them, by the way. Yeah. He's supposed to take them hostage, but as he's flying over the orange army's base, the orange army gets a hold of him and brings him down. And then they well, tries to bring him down. And then there's these two forces trying to control his brain. He's going to be ripped, like his mind's going to be ripped in half. And he's able to like use the power ring kind of to like to bring the the mind powers down. And, and what he does is he creates a suit of armor with the ring, and yeah. that protects him from their mind control. Yeah. And then he negotiates peace between the two peoples. Yeah. They like have a flag, the orange and blue. And when he gets back, he does his own. Power, Wait, before uh, we go to the. You mean get back to Earth? Yeah. Before we get into that, okay. he does something to solve their problem about not aging or whatever. So that they'll grow up and, you know. Uh, yeah. But, anyway, that, that's that's all. No, he doesn't. No? No, he just, like, he, remind, he, like, tells them that, like, war needs to be over. Oh, th yeah, he does. Sorry, that was the next panel. Mm -hmm. I've used my power beam to make all the children of Gera normal again. They will grow up and become adults. Uh, and time have children of their own. Yeah. Good yeah. Job. What do you know? I remembered something. But he heads back to Earth and he charges his power ring and he does his own, like his own oath. And so it's, it's similar but different. It says, yeah. uh, on worlds far, far or scenes at home, wherever the cause should make me roam, always I vow to fight the good fight, to combat evil with Green Lantern's might. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. he dies. Yeah, because he like the yellow plague. Yeah, he got a, a instead of scarlet fever, the yellow plague. Yellow, because due to a necessary impurity in uh -huh. the uh, ring, blah blah blah. Uh, 
he can't any, affect anything yellow, and so he dies of that because he was exposed to it on the planet of the children. Right, but prior to him dying, he sends out another distress signal, much like Abin Sir, and it contacts Hal Jordan. Yeah. Hal Jordan comes, and as Guy Gurner is about to tell him, when you do it, do my oath, and he dies before he can say... He was, was going to teach him the oath. So Hal yeah. comes up with his own, which is the oath that Hal uses. Right. So, and it's really interesting because no matter what, Hal would have become Green Lantern. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. Um, but he decides, you know what? This guy Gardner seems like a good guy. I'm going to go find him. I want to meet so him. He asked the, if the, he wants. He yeah. asked the Guardians if it's okay to just to meet him. Yeah. And there's like permission granted. Yeah. But obviously he can't tell him he's Green Lantern. Right. So he yeah. just goes to the town and and makes friends with a guy. Yeah. And, and Guy's nice. Yeah. And they're friends. Yep. So, flash forward to, I think, the 80s when they finally brought him back. Um, it's that long. I think so. Wow. Uh, granted, granted, I haven't read everything in between, mm -hmm. but Hal has an accident and goes into a coma. Uh -huh. Or no, 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 no. Guy, Guy does. Okay. Uh, Hal uh, steals his girlfriend while he's in a coma. All right. No. Not all right. And then when a guy gets out of the coma, he has brain damage, and that's when he's the jerk. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. Fun. Okay. So, anything else you want to... No. All right. Comic Reflections is recorded in Portland, Oregon, and produced by Sean Roof. He's a terrible. And if we sound bad, it's his fault. Yes. Things. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning. Whatever time you're listening. Au revoir. And if we sound bad, it's his fault. 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 It's his fault.